My name is Warren Rain. I'm CEO and president of Golden Minerals Company. We're producing gold miner in Mexico, and we're about to start, restart a gold silver operation also in Mexico, the Velardena mines, which we have previously produced from. We're a junior mining company with interests in both Mexico and Argentina, and we're, you know, preparing to grow with the restart of the Velardena production. Warren, thank you very much for the introduction. Good to uh, meet you over the internet. Um, <clears throat> the last Crux interview you did was in August uh, last year, 2022, um, and it's been a wild ride uh, in the markets, in Mexico, gold price. It's all been kicking off and going on. Um, do you want to just kind of um, talk through kind of some of the highs and the lows of the last uh well, the last kind of 10 months of, of um, Golden Minerals, please. Yeah, uh, Merlin, yeah, that that's uh, be a good review. You know, when, when I last spoke uh, to Crux in August, we were you know producing um, from our rodeo gold mine in Durango State, Mexico, and, and doing, doing quite nicely with uh, high-grade gold production and you know, processing at our, our cyanide mill at the Velardena properties, about a 100-kilometer haul between the mine and the mill. And, and that worked quite well up until just about the end of the year when uh, head grades at the mine fell off a bit more rapidly than the model predicted. And, and therein you know, began some uh, challenges for the company in terms of uh, keeping cash flow up to the point where it supported the company, where it previously had been pretty much supporting the company along as we, you know, developed our other projects, the Yokivo district in Mexico, um, our Argentina projects, where we have a very interesting up and coming gold project in Salta province. Um, and while we were pursuing you know, the best way to consider restarting the Velardena mine itself. And so um, the challenges from both the, uh, the market changes, you know, the, 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 the liquidity um, issues based on the interest rate rise uh, and 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 all that coming together, you know, offset of course by the higher gold and silver prices, but then again offset by risk aversion, you know, led to some challenges in terms of getting the funding that we needed uh, to move forward. But uh, you know, we're now now prepared to do that. Effectively, the equity markets just kind of it was really really challenging to to raise capital for gold projects in 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 the equity markets plus. There was the kind of the Mexico move against perceived and real Mexican risk, jurisdictional risk. Yeah, and that, that's right. Changed mining law, which is still in, in limbo until the Supreme Court in Mexico decides you know, which way to, to go on it, um, certainly increased the risk factor on Mexico vis-a-vis -vis how it was you know, the, the previous years. Um, that, that has been a challenge, uh, more so for exploration companies than for producers. Um, however... Um, you know, we, we are both, right? We're trying to move forward on exploration in Mexico and, um, you know, continue to be a producer there. I think we will we'll be able to manage it. Um, you know, there's, there's tools in our, our toolkit to, you know, challenge the new law if the Supreme Court does not uh, reverse it or, or find it unconstitutional. And, and we're preparing to protect our rights and the rights of the shareholder, um, you know, by every legal means we can uh, to, to continue on. So in the in the near term, I don't see a, a risk to the producer. Um, I do see you know, significant challenges to new exploration in Mexico if this uh, philosophy in Mexico, this this attitude towards mining persists. Yeah. Well, let's let's see what um, it, it, let's see what the Supreme Court says. Um, is is there a remind me? Is there a timeline on this? It, it's it's unclear. You know, they uh, the Supreme Court will have to act in the next few months, but there's no hard date. Uh, the new legislation was passed on May 9th. Um, you know, companies have 30 business days from that to protect their interest under an injunction, which we're planning to do. We're in process of that. So those will be filed mid-June to protect, uh, you know, the, the, the interest that we had under the previous law until the Supreme Court decides one way or the other. Right. And, and you'll be filing for both the produ producing assets and also the expiration licenses. Exactly. Exactly. We, we absolutely want to protect our our very interesting project at the Yokivo district, uh, where we announced a very high-grade resource earlier this year, which we intend to follow up on, and you know it looks very, very much like a, a, a new possible new producer for us down the road. But we need 
to have that certainty um, under the, the the existing mining concession law that was in place when we started, not the new one. Remind me of the the, um, the resource headlines for uh, Kivo. Yeah, it, it's a, a 570 grams per ton silver equivalent and about a million tons initial resource um, all inferred at this point, but a very small portion of the district, multiple veins left to explore. You know, we've only really touched the district, about 20% of the of the known veins have been uh, partially drilled. So we see you know, great potential here for another high-grade underground opportunity for gold-silver production. Thank you. And um, just going back to um, Rodeo and the and the uh, the challenges with the with with the model and I you know I'm a geologist so I so I, I know that sometimes nature goes against you. Was it a function of drill spacing and um, kind of just a geological change, or were there other factors behind the, the resource model not fitting what you discovered? It was really as we got down to the bottom of the deposit, the assumptions that had been working very well for us uh, to those levels um, started to work less well for us, basically. So uh, a bit on the drill density towards the bottom of the deposit, and we knew it was a limited deposit to start with. You know, we had certainly been hoping for exploration success and making it bigger. It didn't happen here. It's cut, cut off by a fault at the base of the deposit. And you know, in, in short, you know, we uh, over-predicted some of the grades uh, in, the, in the bottom couple of benches where it had been working very nicely in the upper benches. It didn't work the same way in the lower benches. So a bit of geology, a, a bit of drill spacing, um, and really not that big of a surprise other than we were counting on the income. Gold, gold mineralization is so fickle. Um, you know, you can have those assumptions, you can have those correlations that go so well, you know, where you get the certain minerals, you know, you're going to get a certain grade. And then, and then all of a sudden that relationship doesn't work, you know, it just doesn't hold through. But so, so you're, you're producing now from stockpiles from Rodeo, that'll, that'll keep ticking along for another few months. Um, presumably that doesn't uh, generate enough cash flow to kind of run the rest of the business, but it probably just helps a bit for the GNA. Yeah, that, that's right. You know, we, we have um, a much higher grade in the low grade stockpile that we had put aside when we were starting the project, um, you know, when we had access to much higher grades, right, from the pit itself. Um, so we've been pleasantly surprised at the actual mill grades of the uh, lower grade stockpile. We had been thinking it would be about uh, you know, 1.4 grams per ton. It's coming in closer to two grams per ton. And so it it definitely has a nice margin at that grade. Um, you know, break even is something close to the you know one point two, one point one grams per ton, based on the haulage, uh, the fine grind, and the cyanide processing. You know, we do have uh, quite a bit of stockpile material. The question is, you know, we know the grade will eventually tail off um, in in some of the 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 old the the more recent stockpiled material. But until then, you know, we do have the cash flow coming in from from that production. We're still producing uh, uh, between 700 and 800 ounces per month, uh, fairly high cash cost, you know, something around the $1,500 an ounce uh, sort of cost level uh, for ounce of gold. Okay, good. Thank you. That gives us a, a, a good guide. Um, and I guess some of the, the cost, the high costs were from last year, not from um, this year. I guess kind of the, the diesel price must have come back a bit. Uh, yeah, the diesel prices in Mexico didn't vary as much as they had in other countries because the, the petroleum production and, and supply is, is you know, so widely controlled by, by Pemex, the government uh, company. Um, however, you know, the explosives cost did uh, go up uh, very strongly after the Ukraine uh, started the Ukraine conflict, and they've come back down uh, nicely. So, yeah, the costs when we were mining, uh, you know, definitely uh, were challenging in uh, you know 22 um, and and into 23, and then it's it's become less of a problem now that we're just transporting stockpiled material. So we stopped mining about a month ago. Okay, uh, and, good. And now it's just transport. Thanks for the updates on on what's been happening at um, uh, Rodeo. Um, and the, the mill obviously is still working at Veladenia. You've got a, you've just put out a, a, a an announcement saying that you're going to restart the uh, mining operation contingent on a capital raise. Could you just tell me a little bit more about how much money you need, how you're going about it, and where you are in that process? Sure, be glad to. Um, no, the, the Veladenia project has been one that we've been working on for quite some time. We we have been in production previously. 
Um, last time was in 2015. There's a remarkable change this year over last year, which allows us to move forward with the project without the need for substantial capital investment. Previously, we have been looking at uh, doing a biox type uh, oxidation plant construction project at our Velardania plant operation um, in order to be able to get the high gold payables that we need to make the project interesting. What happened was the uh, concentrate sales terms for the pyrite concentrate, which has most of the gold values, dramatically increased this year over last year, and we expect them to stay um, at these increased levels. That allows us to move forward without the need for a high investment um, in a, an oxidation plant. We can move forward with the equipment we have, process by flotation, and sell the cons directly, and get very excellent payables for the gold portion of the resource. So the capital needs now are, are minimal. You know, we need about a half a million dollars right to get started, and um, then there'll be some working cap buildup. So it's about a 2.3 million, um, you know, low maximum cash outlay before we start, uh, you know, uh, whittling that down with income. Um, so to be comfortable, uh, you know, a couple million, two, two to three million is is probably what we're minimally looking for uh, to get going. And there's there's various um, avenues that we have to raise that money. Uh, we have an ATM facility um, that's already set up. Uh, we're looking at asset sales um, and alternatively, it could also be an equity. I've got so many questions. Uh, let's start with what was the change in the in the concentrate market? Um, what what was the change in the in the in the concentrate market? And is it likely or possible that it could revert? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I, it doesn't look like it. I you know I have uh, traders um, interested in long term contracts at the levels that we're currently seeing for gold payable, and better. And and the the change has been the Asian markets um, changed their model about uh, uh, to some extent how they're actually using the uh, concentrate pirate concentrate. Um, and and some of the import restrictions that they put in place, so it, it opens up what we think is is a long term need uh, and high demand for these particular gold rich pyrite concentrates. Are there any other metals in there? Is there silver? Is there copper? Are, you know, are there are there deleterious elements as well as payable elements? Uh, there there are um, all of the above. Uh, there's there's uh, silver which is payable along with the gold in the pyrite concentrate. It's not the bulk of the silver in the Velardania production. In Velardania, we actually produce three different concentrates, uh, a lead concentrate with most of the silver, or almost all the silver and some of the gold, a zinc concentrate, fairly clean, just sphalerates, and, and a pyrite concentrate, which contains the bulk of the gold and some of the silver. It uh, also contains arsenic, so there are maximum levels of arsenic that can be uh, shipped with that pyrite concentrate, and we're below that maximum level comfortably. So and we can manage that. Uh, you know, we feel very comfortable that we can continue to produce the quality of the concentrate that um, has been in demand, is in demand now. And frankly, you know, I'm I'm very confident of that because we have sold about 600 tons of concentrate, you know, to this buyer this spring, based on processing material that we mined last year from these same veins at Velardania. So we know it works. We know the payable is quite good. Um, basically, the payable was about five hundred dollars uh, a ton of ore um, from the material that we processed, which, given the costs of narrow vein mining, still gives us quite a good margin on potential production. What's the what, um, kind of ballpark? What are your costs of um, ton of ore? Um, you know, the ballpark is about two fifty, about half half of the value of the material that that we're selling, uh, which is a it's a good rule of thumb if you can produce for about half the value of, of your material, you're in pretty good condition economically for the project. That's um, um, 100% margin. You know, you've got to be relatively happy with that. Yeah, I am. I am. No, mind you, this is very detailed uh, selective mining, so there's nothing inexpensive about it. But we have a, a contractor online to do the mining for us. He's the same contractor that, that uh, successfully did the test mining for us last year. Um, and uh, based on those results, I'm, I'm confident that we can continue. And it's a matter now of just um, increasing the scale of production. Uh, previously, in the test mining, we were running four stopes simultaneously. We'll start there when we start up. 
and then we have to increase to about uh, 15, 16 stopes um, can, you know, at the same time simultaneously being mined, which is a challenge, but it's a, it's a manageable challenge for us. And we think this contractor is up to the task. And what about the the, the working capital? Because the, kind of the, the development cost of an, an additional 14 or well, 9 to 14 kind of working stopes is going to require uh, additional unfunded outlay as you as you do that development work. Yeah, and that's and that's where that that 2.3 million uh, high water mark of of cash outlay before we have you know cash payback comes in. So half a million to get started on the four stops, and we'll spend more money than we're making for the next uh, few months. We we start paying back uh, at the six month mark, and we're we're paid back and whole again at the nine month mark after startup. Um, you know the operation looks like it'll throw off about uh, ten million per year after tax. You know depending on some variables that we're still getting more detail on. Um, and and we'll have this all put together in a technical report that should be coming out uh, this summer, uh, in in just a month or two. You know, a cynic would say that um, small operations tend not to work, and that you just end up like a hamster on the wheel. You know, the the, the money you you make goes into the next bit of development and the next bit of exploration. And uh, what what do you feel is the kind of a level of critical mass that you could um, you need to kind of get into that growth phase rather than uh, replacement phase that that can be managed by doing a bit of modification to the mill that we have the flotation mill the flotation plant that that we're using to get started with has currently a capacity of about 325 tons per day at the 400 to 500 tons per day mark um, this is a much more interesting project and there's no shortage of resource and we have uh, you know ample resource uh, at the m and i measured indicated level to run for about seven years at the 325 ton per day uh, throughput. It increasing, um, you know, we still have double that in terms of resource, um, you no know, much inferred, but it can be uh, you know, proven up as we get deeper. And this, the system's wide open at depth. So I think, you know, the upside here is is increasing production as, as long as we can manage the additional stopes required because you're only getting about, I uh, you know, 30 tons per day per stope out of these veins. So that does put a limit on it eventually. Um, but you can manage, you know, 20 stopes simultaneously without much trouble, you know, once you're up and running. So that that is sort of the uh, the upside blue sky of this project. And it does have a, a long potential life. You know, we know from previous drilling that there is still, you know, the vein system is still uh, decent grade and and viable at uh, depths of up to you know half a kilometer below where we currently are. So plenty of room for expansion there, time wise. Classic um, Mexican um, mesothermal geology, which just kind of goes to the center of the earth. Yeah, exactly. Once once you get through, now if you're not in one of the shallow epithermals, and once they start becoming mesothermal, they just continue. And and so it, that that is quite nice. You, know, you might have a small change in metal content as you go, but we're we're still seeing very strong silver gold values um, in in the deeper parts of the system. So, in a sense, kind of just just looking at that, um, I know you've got lots of kind of exploration upside in other projects and other areas, but um, it's almost as if this is the big deal for the company. You know, you've got to get this right to be able to unlock any value in anything else. Yeah, that's right. That's the way I see it too, uh, Merlin. It, this this throws off enough cash potentially to run the company and expand the exploration side of the business. Um, this is you know a large investment. We have we have everything in place to move forward. You know requiring very very little startup capital as noted, uh, because we you know previously paid for the mill the development. Uh, you know we have these four stopes ready to go, um, and so this is the the stepping stone for the company that will maintain us for the future. So if we do this correctly, then there's a lot of option for the company. And at a market capitalization of, uh, I think today is around $27, $28 million Canadian. Um, have you got kind of carte blanche from the board just to to go out and raise 
five million dollars or three million dollars. So you said two to three, but I'm, I'm I'm thinking U.S. and I kind of translate that into Canadian and I add a bit of headroom, so I think five million dollars Canadian. You know, have you got the carte blanche to just go go out and get it raised and just get it done, or are you saying, well, hang about that might be too dilutive in the equity market? We're looking at different ways of doing this. Are, are, are you are you looking at um, what's they call it alternative financing structures? I've looked at many structures, and most most of the alternative structures don't work well unless you have great cash flow. Um, so certainly we have uh, strong board support in getting some uh, some funding either through the ATM equity markets. Asset sales would be the best, uh, but asset sales take time. You know, we do have uh, one asset that that we had previously sold uh, for for excellent uh, terms that was returned to us uh, because of the poor markets earlier this year, which I expect I can sell again. It's certainly worth about five million cash uh, if I can get the right buyer to silver mine um, in Mexico as well, ready to go. So yes, we have you know, strong support from the board. We will require some you know, additional board approval on any equity raise we do just to make sure that the, uh, the terms are reasonable and the dilution is under control. Um, but uh, you know, the ATM is certainly the, the, the least expensive money that we can continue to get in the door you know, if the markets are... Um, permissive for use of that ATM facility. In, in, in your most recent update, I think it was uh, just a, a day or two ago, you, you mentioned that you've got cash of around $2.4 million and kind of accounts payable of about $1.7 million. So you're not a huge level of headroom, but you also spoke about the kind of business being a going concern and um, needing to refinance by um, early Q3, you put it, which in my book is, is um, July, which is you know, next month. Could you kind of put a bit more color on that, please? Yeah, I certainly can. You know, we, we've, we've been uh, managing our cash closely here over the last uh, quarter as the markets have been a bit unfavorable to us uh, for, for uh, on occasion, we had some decent uh, ATM funding. Uh, we need a bit more. Um, um, so we'll see how it goes with either the asset sales, the ATM, or a potential uh, you know, equity funding deal um, here early in Q3. Uh, we just we need a bit more cash just to uh, keep going. Um, the liquidity is the issue. You know, once we have uh, Valerdania producing, of course, there's plenty of cash coming in. When you say ATM, do you mean at the market, or do you mean um, automatic teller machine? As the as <laughs> at the market. Yeah. Sorry, it's it's uh, a very very common in the U.S. And maybe not in other markets, uh, uh, but uh, it's it's an at the market facility that's already in place where you know shares are sold into the market uh, theoretically in a way that doesn't uh, depress the share price and allows the company to sell treasury shares at a, a reasonable um, price point without uh, extreme dilution or discount. Is there a cap to that? I mean, will it cover the two or three million dollars that you're looking to raise? Yeah, theoretically it would. If, if we have enough volume to be able to take advantage of it or if we can attract you know, block, seller, block uh, purchasers under that program, we could get all the funding we need um, under the ATM. It has a ten million dollar cap to it uh, at present. Well, I think that's that's the kind of the key thing to to, to look out for is the kind of the the news on funding and then news on development. And I, those those are the 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 key deliverables or key milestones for kind of the for the the rest of the year. Um, now I'm sure you'll you'll want to tell me about some of the other aspects of the of the portfolio. So you know if we look at it in terms of kind of news flow through the year and understanding that those are the kind of the key parameters: development rate and um, financing. Tell me some more. Well, you, 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 before the call, you mentioned a technical report, and you've, you've on this call you've mentioned Argentina and other things in Mexico. So, do you want to just kind of throw out some of the things you're looking to deliver in twenty twenty three? Yeah, I think the the, the key on, on Valerdeño will be the actual start of mining and sales of concentrates in July. It'd be just next month. The the, the funding sufficient uh, to meet our needs in the near term. Um, that we should have done certainly uh, before the end of July. Um, the 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 work that we have yet to do in in uh, Mexico on the Oquivo project, uh, they'll have to wait a bit until we have uh, exploration funding for additional drilling on that project. But very exciting project to move forward with. The the gold prospect we have in Argentina, Salt Argentina, um, is uh, you know what looks to be developing into a a shallow heap leach. Uh, gold deposit uh, with potential size to be uh, um, 
you know, possibly a million ounce uh, sort of open pit gold mine. Uh, one, you know, could be the, the the next newest gold mine in Argentina. I'm very excited about that. Moving that one forward. That's the Cerita Este and Desierto project, and we're still in a uh, earn in uh, agreement with Barrick on our El Quevar silver deposit. They're looking for a very large gold deposit there, and and they've uh, been continuing work at a you know a reasonably measured pace, shall we say. Uh, but uh, they're they're still very strongly um, in you know engaged in moving that one forward. They're looking for you know a world class gold deposit there on that project. So there's lots of opportunity for the company you know to expand in value. And at our current valuation, um, frankly, it's it's uh, ridiculous, ridiculously low given that we we expect to be producing uh, you know 1.6 million silver ounces equivalent silver ounces uh, per year within nine months time. And our market cap is, uh, as you mentioned, about 20 million US. Um, so excellent value to get in now and, and move this forward. Good luck with it all. Thank you very much for spending the time talking to me. It's been a, a, a very pleasurable uh, introduction to the company for, on, on um, my side anyway. Thank, thank you, Merlin. Very pleased to be able to explain the projects to you.